Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here with a feature overview and review of the Gigabyte X670 Gaming X AX. Now, this is an AMD motherboard that I used in a recent build with the Corsair 5000D, and I'll leave all the specs in the description, but I'm going to show off some of the parts as we go through and talk about the highlights and features of this gaming motherboard, because I was surprised by it, because it is a budget gaming motherboard, and yet it's one that has a PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD, as well as a few other hidden treats. So it's got support for the latest NVMe, and I've done a video separately on that that I'll link to in the description, because it offers up to 12,000 megabytes per second if you've got the right drive, so really fast. You'll also see some other treats, including plenty of USB connections on the rear, absolutely stacks of them and i'll leave all the specs of the board in the description as well so you can find out more about it as well as links to where to buy but you can see it has a nice lineup of things here lots of connectivity options and plenty going on considering the price of the board it's a pretty nice setup with some minor complaints that i'll get to in a minute but otherwise, generally, it's been easy to use and easy to set up with. And I'm using it here with the AMD Ryzen 7 7700, a Corsair MP600 Core XT, the Crucial T700 NVMe SSD, as well as a WD Black SN850, and some Corsair Vengeance DDR5 RAM. Now, immediately, as soon as I got my box, I noticed a few different treats. So, for example, you'll see it has two USB 3.2 connectors, which gives you front panel connections for your case. So if you've got four USB-A connectors on your case on the front panel or on the top, you have the option to connect those up. Now, you also have a few system fan headers on the motherboard. However, I will note this is one of the low lights because there aren't very many of them. There's only a handful of these scattered around. So if you're going to be connecting your fans directly to the motherboard rather than to a fan controller, then this is worth keeping in mind. You've got system fan one and two down here at the bottom, as you can see on the middle and right hand side of the motherboard. And then you've got some further up as well, but it's very limited in the number of connectors there. I also noted that for some reason there's no pump header or all-in-one pump header on there, so that's fairly interesting. Now this is an AMD motherboard with the AM5 socket set up on it, and as I said, it supports DDR5 RAM, so there are a number of nice highlights to it already, and it has Expo, which I'll talk about later on, so you can get a nice speed boost out of it. One of the things that I wanted to test out though immediately, because I happened to have it at the right time, is the Crucial T700 PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD, because this gives you nice speeds potentially. And the other thing about this Gigabyte board, as you can see, is when you remove the heat shield off the port at the top here, there's a little latch underneath. So there's a latch there that holds the drive in place, rather than your traditional M2 screw. So it just clicks down over the top of it. Really nice and makes insulation even more pleasant. And you can see this crucial drive is rather chunky here. I've done a video separately on this and how it runs. But this is a Corsair drive that I'm also going to be using. And that's the other bonus of this board is the sheer number of ports that you've got on there. Now, this is a Gen 4 drive and it's, again, a budget drive. So it actually runs uh, around 4000 megabytes per second. And this can be installed underneath here. So there's a heat shield protector here, which you can take off and then you can stick your drive in there. And you actually have access to three more ports in there, as you can see. So you can actually install more than one, you can install multiple drives. And as I said, I ended up with three drives in this system, but more on that later on, because I found that they also all ran at the speeds that they should do. So it hasn't negatively impacted the experience by having multiple drives. Again, you've got that same latch system in there as well, so no screw to worry about. And you've got some nice thermal pads on the heat shields. These heat shields help to dissipate heat and keep the drives running efficiently. I've done a video separately on that where I tested to see how effective they are, and the answer is very, and it's worth using them. So nice nifty system. Now this has DDR5 RAM support. I'm using two sticks, you know, 32 gigabytes, and you need to install them in ports A2 and B2, which is the second one from the left and then the fourth port from the motherboard. And that ensures that you have that dual RAM setup and that you can use Expo as well. So we'll ensure that it's running at maximum speeds. More on Expo later on, but it's an important BIOS setting you need to turn on to make sure your RAM runs at the right speed because this is fast RAM, so you want to make the most of it. Now, there are clips at the top and bottom that you need to push. If you're aware of uh, building PC logic, then you're probably already aware of this, but I just wanted to demo some of it while we're going through. 
And you'll see this motherboard has a few other things to it. Now, it does lack a code readout, so you're not necessarily going to know when you get to the boot up stage whether you've got problems. So it's not like a little LED display to let you know of warnings, but you will notice from these close up shots that there are some buttons to reset the CMOS and other things if you do have problems with it. Now for this build, I'm using a Corsair H150i Elite Capelix and LCD upgrade kit. As I noted already earlier on, it doesn't have an all-in-one pump header on this motherboard, which is strange, but you do have CPU fan and CPU optional. So you do have the ability to connect there. You'll also see there's some RGB connectors if you need them as well. So if you're going to be using RGB parts in your build that want to connect up to the motherboard, you can do that. Now this cooler supports both Intel and AMD and it has a bracket selection here, which you can use to attach it. So AM5 motherboard. So what happens here in this build, for example, is that you just remove these plastic connectors. And this is different from the AM4 you might be used to if you're an AMD user, but essentially we have some standoffs that are standard on there. Now for AM4, you'd usually put a cooler down on top of that and use clips to hold it on top of those plastic clips, push it down. But in this build, actually, we're doing things slightly differently. So you remove those pre-installed standoffs, and then we use these standoffs, which are slightly different on one end to the other. So a bit fatter on one end than they are on the other. By the way, I've done a full in-depth build guide on this setup. If you want to see that, it's worth checking out. I'll go into a lot of depth on all these things. But essentially, we're just replacing what was pre-installed with the Gigabyte board with the parts from Corsair to allow for the installation of that. But I thought it was worth demoing because it is quite a bit different. This is more similar to the Intel setup, the way Intel motherboards work versus AMD. So at least for the traditional, because now the pins are on the motherboard with this because it's an AM5 motherboard. It has a different socket design, which like the Intel setup uses pins on the motherboard. So you need to be careful with the installation process of the CPU. And you'll see some close up shots here as I remove that CPU protective cover and housing, and you can see those pins. Now you need to carefully, very carefully, lower your AMD CPU in here. You can see the Ryzen 7 7700X here, just gently placing that into position. You'll notice there are notches cut out on the CPU if you're not aware already of where that sort of lines up and how to put it in, and then just gently placing that in there and then popping that protective housing off. You can see from a couple of angles what that looks like. Just be aware of those edges when you're applying thermal paste if you do need to apply any. Now this motherboard uses multiple power connectors. You can see you've got two 8-pin CPU power connectors in the top there. I'm using Corsair RM Shift PSU for this build, which is an interesting setup that has quite nice flexible cable that run along the back of the case and then obviously connect up here. I was just demoing how to connect these up and where you'd plug these cables in for both this and the 24 pin power cables that you'll need on the right hand side. And more on that in the full build if you want to see it, but this was the standard setup. So this is the power connectors you need as a minimum to make the most of this motherboard. You can see you've got the large 24 pin on the right and then the two eight pins on the top left. Now USB connections, I talked already about how you've got two front panel USB connectors, but it only has two internal USB connectors. So that's worth keeping in mind depending on what you're connecting. Now I was connecting multiple different things in here, including RGB fans, RGB lighting panels, and more. So I ended up using this NZXT internal hub, which uses SATA power and connects to one single header on the motherboard, but then you can plug in multiple other devices. So you can see it can take up to four USB connections, which is really nice, so it's worthwhile purchase. Now we've got the board set up. I'm just going to drop it into the case and install it. This is an ATX board, so it fits nicely in most cases. And most of the standoff screws are already pre-installed for you as well. So you can just slip it into place and then screw it down. Goes nicely with the theme of this as well. A few other things of note. This board does support Wi-Fi, so that's worth knowing. But apparently the onboard audio isn't that great. I haven't really experienced it, but I have tried out the HD audio, which you can see here, which has... The connections for that are in the bottom left. So you're running from the case, you can try that there. And you also have a number of other connectors that need to be connected up. As I mentioned, you'll see that there's a CMOS button down the bottom here, and you've got two other buttons at the top. You also have those front panel connections down the bottom here as well. So you can see if you're plugging in your power connectors, for example, they'd line up here and they're clearly marked on what goes where as well. So it should make for a fairly straightforward build. And that is indeed what I found, the build process was fairly easy and I booted first time without any problems in here. 
Now, there are some things to keep in mind, though. Your experience may well vary. Obviously, we're on a new platform here which supports DDR5 RAM, and there are some issues with Expo that are worth bearing in mind. So if you've set up your system using this motherboard, you've got DDR5 RAM, then it's worth going into your BIOS settings and checking everything's running smoothly. On the main screen here, you can see that you can see a list of the M2 drives that are installed, and you'll note that they're all recognized immediately, so they're all straight there, which is great. And you can also see the system fan spinning up and also a list of the RAM that's installed. So everything's recognized. It's well worth going in and just checking that. But the reason I wanted to go in here was to check on the AMD Expo settings because we want to make sure that it's running at maximum speed. If you're not running Expo, then your RAM is basically not running at maximum speed. You're not making the most of it. You've paid good money for fast RAM and it's not working properly. So you can see that there are some options in here for DDR5 Auto Booster, then Extreme Memory Profile, which is known as Expo, but for some reason it's marked here as XMP1, which is weird. XMP is actually from Intel, so that's strange because this is obviously not an Intel board, but just bear in mind you want to switch on to XMP1. Now I played around with some of the other settings in here when going through a setup process. XMP1 was one of them, but then you'll see there's other options like system memory profile multiplier, as well as this DDR booster, which you can enable or set to auto. What I found was doing this, and actually tweaking a few of these things, so you'll see there's low latency support as well. If you turn that on and the Expo high bandwidth support, then you may well have problems, because I did. Basically what happened is it then wouldn't boot into Windows. It ended up throwing an error up so it's worth bearing that in mind that maybe just stick to the XMP setting which is what I did to get it working well so there is that. If you go into system info you can also see that despite populating three of the NVMe SSD lanes the PCIe X16 slot is running at the maximum lane speed so that's great. It is worth noting that you only get one X16 slot on this and it's the top one so that's where you want to install your graphics card here. The other ones aren't X16. Now you can see me going through that process as I mentioned basically making sure that XMP is on and that's it and then it boots into Windows and I tested it and everything's running as it should be. XMP is running nicely. One other thing to bear in mind though is you probably want to check out for the latest BIOS updates because there has been some problems with AMD boards and if you're not aware already, I'll link to a Gamers Nexus video in the description on it. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.